to achieve and maintain the healthy smile you deserve. On the web at baystatedental.com. We thank the generosity of our underwriters. For more information, please contact the Westfield State Foundation at 413-572-8646. Friday mornings is something different on 89.5 FM. It's JP's Talk About Town. Community Radio. 89.5 WSKB. Live from the campus of Westfield State University. This is 89.5 FM, WSKB, Westfield. everybody good morning and it's a wonderful tuesday out there hope you drove safely because there's a little bit of moisture on the roads this is kathy palmer bringing you ken's den notice i'm not ken Ken's, <laughs> ken is the same hair yeah well yeah <laughs> no. i do i have i have the ponytail, ponytail. going i do have the ponytail yeah. going i guess you didn't shave the sides but ken is not here this morning i am taking his place we are talking to you from westfield state university this is wsk B at 89.5 FM. Phone number, Peter, is... 413-572-5579. And you can listen to us so worldwide at wskb.org. If you would like to call in and say that you really miss Ken and would rather he be here instead no, of me, we don't. No, by no. all no, means, please... I don't please. think you're any of those phone calls. <laughs> <laughs> by, Ken, by we really do miss you. No, we by do. All, we do. All right, are you and done? he's not even awake. No. Are you done? No. Are you finished? No. Oh, yes. There's voices in my ear that I'm hearing. 
I'm hearing voices, folks. This the, could be a bit of a problem. That's because we're wearing headphones. headphones. <laughs> <laughs> and those. we're off to an interesting start already. I Thank like it. You, Both Jay. sides of the political aisle were on the same page. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Boy, this is going to be a tough morning. Get me through this, please. Help me out. All right. Um, You're auditioning for your own show, Kathy, here no, right now. Yes, no, you are. That is so not happening. That, 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 that is I have She's on too the busy. board. Yeah. I know. I don't have time. On the board in front of me, staring at me, making some very nice faces, is Mr. Peter Coles. Peter, it's already January, so yes. I suppose they're going to need, and I'm going to leave that nomenclature, not to Bob. To Ken to give you your new nomenclature for January. This could take some thought. So I believe I'm the jaunty jouster of January. Jaunty jouster of January. Yes. That's mm. just... I, I, joyous. I, 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 joyous. <laughs> there you go. Joyous. Uh, there's no way I'm going to remember that. But okay, Peter. Peter Cole. Picture on him board. on a horse. This is my birthday lance. month, so it has to be nice this, this month. It can't be something bad. Oh, you get a whole it's birthday, your birthday month. month? Yes. When is your birthday, oh. Peter? The 28th. End 28th. Of the month. That's on the cusp of February. All right, uh, Bob. February. That's it. Stop. Oh, Let me finish. All right. I'm good. I've been very good. I haven't talked at all. I didn't even say goodbye in my program. <laughs> Goodbye, everyone. Right, get out every, there and volunteer. No, no, no. no Next please. to me is Bob Plass, as you well know. And Bob, my, yeah. my advice, oh, Bob not talking is like, I don't know, winter not coming. Anyway. <laughs> well, <laughs> hey, it you know the start, come this year. All right. To my far left, hiding behind the turret, wave. Wait, come on out, Dan. You can't hide there forever. They make me I put try. there. That's right. Is He's my co-host it. for the morning, none other than the illustrious, well-known, experienced... Dan Pocket. Uh, I wasn't sure where that was going, but uh, <laughs> you know what, Dan? I wasn't either. He's the, you know, he's the executive director of the uh, Westfield Athen- Athenaeum, yeah, that's which is coming. our library. I, I would like to get to that, Bob, but thank oh, you. Oh, yeah. <laughs> 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 to my right, still hanging out, I suppose we have to give honorable mention to the none other but Jay Pagluka. Good morning, Jay. Good morning. I, I do like staying on and being annoying once in a while. <laughs> <laughs> I seem to have a room full of you guys that are willing to help me do that we this morning. We need to do what we're good at. I, I do have a question yeah. for Dan. Mm. Oh, yeah. How do we pronounce Atha whatever? Well, we go by Athenaeum. There's some people who pronounce it differently, but Athenaeum is the standard. Let's just say library, okay? Yeah. Yeah. Let's, yeah. let's let it yeah. go with yeah. that, Dan. Yeah. Athenaeum, I, mean, I think I pronounce it Athenaeum. You I do. do. I say Athenaeum. Athenaeum. Yeah. Now, where yeah. did that come from? Because there's, well, there's, there's an A. The a, 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 yeah, a, a can be pronounced in a few different ways depending yeah. on where it falls in a word. All right, but let me ask you this. What What is the difference between an Athenaeum mm-hmm. and a library? Uh, it's a place of learning is what it officially means, they I guess, you know, like, in, um, so we also, okay. we have the library piece, but we also have a historical museum and an art gallery. And so most Athenaeums have, uh, a, a museum piece to it. Or, um, if you go down to like C- Connecticut in the Wadsworth Athenaeum, their big thing is the museum. And then they have a smaller library. So has, uh. has Westfield referred to this particular institution? From the beginning, as library or Athenaeum? Uh, I Neum, think Neum, at Neum, least Neum. as as its uh, founding in 152 years ago or whatever it is officially now, uh, it was an Athenaeum. But before that, there was a library in Westfield, and um, it was a subscription library that you had to pay a membership to be able to check out books from. Um, and I don't know if they called it an Athenaeum then or if it was just a library. Mm. Um, Dan, are there many Athenaeums throughout the country now or are there uh, there very few? No, there's not many. I don't know of many outside of the New England area. Um, Really? uh, There's like, uh, in Pittsfield, there's the Berkshire Athenaeum. Boston has the Boston Athenaeum. Mm -hmm. And then us, those are the three big ones that I know of off the top of my head. And then in Connecticut, there's the Wadsworth. Yeah, because Wadsworth is the only other one I'd ever heard of. Yeah. So I, I, it's nice to be kind of unique here. Yeah. And, and I'm glad you defined the difference between a library and an Athenaeum. That's I mean, interesting. A lot of libraries now also have some sort of gallery art space, but it's a lot of times it's not as defined because they want to, you know, have some of the local culture because they're they're community centers. So mm. you, know, you also local have artists the nice have little meeting there. space downstairs, and then, right? You know, and, and we've done some talks and mm-hmm. things. It's it's really a it's, nice it's, building. Yeah, yeah. we're we're, we're yeah. fans of it. We're, we're, you're, oh. Am I right that, uh, or is this a myth, that you are one of the only cities? Westfield is one of the only cities that has a we we 
our something to do. We pay our for the library with city funds. Uh, no, 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 almost every it, the. The way you do it is very different. In some, some in Massachusetts, again, it's has its own little <laughs> craziness you, going it's to it. Um, you know, throughout some of the other, the rest of the country, there's a lot of places that have like county library systems. You know, so it'll be the county will pay for it. But in Massachusetts, a lot of times you're either city department, uh, you're a fully no, non-profit. Uh, entity all by yourself where then there's a lot like us that are sort of like quasi where we have a line item on the city budget but they sort of give it to the nonprofit Athenaeum to spend as they see f- as they see fit quote unquote sure. you know uh, yeah, of course. and then but in Massachusetts there's regulations if you want to be a certified library which means your, your patrons are in good standing and can borrow from other libraries in Massachusetts right. uh, your city has to continually fund the library appropriately which means certain increases over so many years and uh, interesting. Uh, so that, that they can't be you know disproportionately defunding the library while giving more to police or sure. fire or yeah. schools or whatever you know so yeah. um, so there's I, some regulations I was happy out there. to see that um, the end of the month you're going to have your official opening. Yeah, yeah. Well, the capital so, improvement. Project. Yeah. So the main thrust of the building project has uh, completed on phase one. How long has that been going on? It <laughs> seems I believe like forever. forever. Yeah. I think yeah. it seems yeah. like forever. <laughs> forever. Well, it's been we were going to hit it, but then we changed the calendar, so it was almost forever. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Almost forever. Yeah. Uh, but it's been, what, two years? Two years, two, about, yeah. yeah. And um, it, it came That's out great. Bad. I love it. Um, yeah. It certainly got bigger than we thought, but again a lot of you didn't know what f- factors outside of our control hey doors. any any well, cons- i'm going through that any construction project oh yeah. i well, don't know i didn't know about that asbestos tile that has to come up well, we, yeah we we that weren't kind, yeah that we thought it was a much smaller project when we first proposed and everything mm-hmm. and then we found out we have to put in fire sprinklers which meant we had to do a lot of other work so now, then when we did, did that we knew it was going to uh, cuz we moved a window or a door and that's what the fire department said was triggering an entire building's need for no. sprinklers. Yeah. Is that yeah. serious? Yeah. Really? You, you did an entranceway, wow. right? Yeah. We did yeah, an we, entranceway we moved, that triggered it. We moved where <gasps> you come in the back of the building. Because now the egress you know. is different and things like that. So yeah. yeah. So then that triggered needing to put sprinklers throughout the whole building, which meant we had to remove asbestos. And, you know, because our architect was saying, you know, the, the scope of this project is very small. You don't even come close to the percentage wise. And. And really, the entrance is in sort of the same place. It just changed which wall it's on. But and what is the percentage? Is it one third or? Uh, I think it was one third. That was that was two third. years ago. Uh, now I'm trying to remember. So, <laughs> that is not my. Sounds like Tina. Tina's was, like ah, I don't remember. Yeah, I, I think. I mean, a lot of. Um, there's a lot of different things, but I think it was one third for fire sprinklers. Some of it's fifty percent of the building for like having to come up to code on all your electrical and plumbing. Plus, and all it that probably stuff. depends yeah. on when the building was built and things right. like that. There's yes. a lot of factors. So we had a lot that. of grandfathered stuff, you know. <clears throat> and when was that built? Well, the original house, the Gill- Fowler Gillet House, that was part, 1838. Yeah. Right, correct. Um, and then in 1920, well, they started in 27, 1929. They opened up the the great hall area that comes off to so Elm Street. So they built that. That yeah, was after. That was an that, after. That, yeah. After. Where yeah. The, the children's room and the administrative offices above it, um, that was the original With house. your private bathroom. With my, yes, private, private executive suite. Was that suite. a bedroom at one point? Mm-hmm. Uh, it was pro- yeah, it's, yeah, it was the, a bedroom. And the, then the, um, up where, if you know the Whitney study up, there's a little meeting room in that area. Right. That was also two bedrooms where um, William Gillett was born. Yeah. I, may, I can't remember if it was William. Lucy was born up there too, I believe. And then where the adult library mm-hmm. is used to be, where the Clap Tavern was. You Wait know, the, a minute. The Clap Tavern where... Um, yeah, the Clap had, Tavern is still in existence, right? Yes, Down it was Court moved. Street. It was moved from the corner of Elm and Court up to Court Street. And so that was where you went to get books at the Clap Tavern? No, 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 no. That was <laughs> well, the, no, 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 yeah, no, no. Got the book. Yeah. Before yeah. that section was built, before that library mm. was built, the Athenaeum oh, I see. Okay. was built, the Clap Tavern Clap was Tavern originally was on, on that there. property, and they moved it. Because back then, before they, the they 60s moved edition houses everywhere. Or the 29 edition? Oh, way back in the beginning. Yeah, okay. Way, way back in the beginning. Way, yeah, the yeah, way back, way back. Way, uh, the clap 
the that Ezra are, Clapp are, are, Tavern. We, we, That's we the that house number. that, um, it's a dental office. You know, there's City Hall right. mm-hmm. parking lot. Okay. And next to it is the Brick House. That's my. Uh, that's a Pat Peppick's office. Yeah. And then next to it is the dental office where his brother, unfortunately now deceased, used to have his office. That's that big red, yeah, another one. beautiful yeah. building. And it's you can Clapp still tavern. see remnants of the, the tavern inside. I'm sure you can. You can, I don't yeah, go in, yeah. but I'm You've sure never you been can. in? I, you know, when my Reminence kids were little, because they had <laughs> races, <laughs> okay. yeah. but I, I really don't remember it, Bob, to be honest. Yeah. I, I, I wasn't in it that yeah, long. Yeah, well, I, I would have much. taken you and we would have had a drink of Sam Adams beer down at the Clap Tavern. Down at the Clap, Clap Tavern. Tavern. So yeah. why are they don't, somebody doesn't come up with a, a new Clap Tavern or whatever. Well, there was an interesting story about Ezra Clapp. In, uh, in Massachusetts, they made slavery illegal. And after they made it illegal, we weren't very good about adhering to the law, so people still had their slaves. And Ezra Clapp was one that still maintained his slave, Thomas. Oh. And Thomas actually sued him for keeping him. He, he said he was being kidnapped. And ah. it went to the courts, and, and Clapp, of course, lost. Yeah. Wow. And Thomas was let free. Wow. So that Amazing. These are some of the stories we don't always tell. Yeah, no. Yeah, yeah. The, yeah. the dark well, side of history. Um, the good news uh, is that we have people to tell those stories, like you, Kath. Ooh. And, oh, yeah, yeah. I'm on my way oh, out. Oh, Bob, I'm I can tell Bob stories here. about yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I stories can about. tell stories about Bob and I. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Before I don't, don't After he fence. leaves. Yeah, yeah. After no, no, he no. leaves, I'll tell you about Yeah, Bob. yeah, yeah. The night I, that we. Oh, yeah, yeah, really. I'm kidding. Well, it's in my memoir. <laughs> oh, I, think, I, think, I, think, I think it's a paragraph. <laughs> it might be a sentence. <laughs> For it, might be a sentence. Be a, it might be a phrase. It's a run-on sentence, it's of course. Run-on. That's <laughs> Bob, Bob, Bob's hair had it own, its own oh, memoir. Listen, my hair. i got to go to the barber right now. I'm going to forego um, Kelly and Regis, and I'm going oh, to the barber because I might. Isn't I Kelly cannot, gone now, uh, too? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> anyway, don't, I'm, I'm out. don't tell me. Um, you guys have a good time. Um, January 25th. Um, uh, is uh, no January 26th is a public opening. Yes. Uh, yes, and you're having all kinds of things happening on Saturday, January 26th. Yeah, yeah. So there'll be. Sure, I start. So do the penguin out. plunge in the morning and then come over in the afternoon. Yeah, the penguin plunge was in the afternoon. I thought that was at one or something. Oh yeah, one o'clock. Okay, so yeah. you're in the morning. Sure. Yeah, oh, nine yes, a.m. Come over, get a donut, and then go jump in the water. Oh, oh, that's oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'll, 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 oh, you've got to contribute to that because I just contribute. Uh, Rick Barry sent me. Did you get your Rick yeah, Barry I got request? Yeah, I get it. yeah um, we get requested every yeah. year. Bobby, you need to talk in the microphone. This is oh. radio. <laughs> oh, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> you were all listening to my chest. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, God. Never mind. Bye. 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 <laughs> happy uh, happy New Year, you guys, and uh, get out there and volunteer this year. All righty, thank you. And we have to go to a break, Peter. We're all set, and then we'll be back with a guest. Thank you.
Support for the community programming of WSKB is provided by the Barnes and Noble College Bookstore in the Ely Campus Center, offering Westfield State t-shirts, sweatshirts, and gift merchandise, all of your academic needs, and offering textbook materials in new, used, ebook, and rental formats. Available at the bookstore on campus or online at westfieldstate.bncollege.com. Support for the community programming of WSKB is provided by Comcast and Xfinity.com. Offering Xfinity TV, Internet, home phone, and home security services. Information on all that Xfinity has to offer in the Westfield area is available online at Xfinity.com. Support for the community programming of WSKB is provided by Westfield Bank. For more than 160 years, Westfield Bank has been an important community presence and commercial leader in the Pioneer Valley. With convenient full banking services in Westfield, West Springfield, East Longmeadow, Agawam, Feeding Hills, Springfield, Southwick, as well as Enfield and Granby, Connecticut, visit us on the web at westfieldbank.org. We thank the generosity of our underwriters. For more information, please contact the Westfield State Foundation at 413-572-8646. Wednesday mornings from 6 till 8, it's Tina Gorman with Wake Up Wednesday. Community Radio, 89.5 WSKB. Live from the campus of Westfield State University, this is 89.5 FM, WSKB, Westfield. And good morning. We are back with WSKB up at Westfield State University, 89.5 FM. And the phone number to call in again, Peter, is... 413-572-5579. It's up on the wall over there. There you go. Well, there you go, right in front of me. Oh, gee, please don't hide it. All righty. <laughs> Unfortunately, we do not have Ken with us this morning, but it's me, Kathy he Palmer. is at the Consumer Electronics Show. The yeah, I don't think he might. Dog. Yeah. I know, in lovely Las Vegas. He better report on that next week, because I've been I seeing know. stuff. On, on the web that there's some really, really cool stuff there this year. Yeah, Dan, don't even ask. Well, I want to go. Th- no, I mean, you, you and I, but the eyes there. are going to gloss over. The, the hey, listen, it. Samsung and Apple have created a deal where you can get Apple TV on a Samsung television really? right out of the box. So wow. that's a big, that's big right there. Yeah. That's a big that's one. news. Okay. You heard it here first on WSKB. We heard it here first on Unless WSKB. Unless you heard it somewhere else first. <laughs> All righty. Unfortunately, we did, not, we did not get Ken's monologue this morning. You know what, Pete? So, no. go for it. I'm not it. doing it. You got no. one, Dan? No. You got what one? What do you mean, Ken? Let's talk about bookmarks. No. <laughs> <laughs> That's very controversial, I hear. <laughs> Speaking of controversial and exciting, we do have a guest in the studio this morning, and we are excited to have him. We have Brent Bean from the uh, Westfield City Council. Brent, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. It is always nice to have you. You are back again I, for a I new am. year. I noticed, I noticed Ken wasn't here, not because... Um, I knew he wasn't going to be here. It's because <laughs> I under I, I, when I was listening driving in and I was listening to the to this to the show, I understood that someone was rep- you know pronouncing the word library correctly. There yes. you go. Yeah. So yeah. That, yeah. that, that kind of triggered wait. that. I was like, oh wait a minute, Ken's not there. I heard an extra R in there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, I swear yeah. I heard an R. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. So Brent, uh, what what have you got to share with us this morning about the city council and anything exciting? Yeah, no, I mean up? I guess it's uh, it's it's kind of a reset year for us. Uh, we we we've, <laughs> we've gone through some um, uh, small changes within the council, uh, not in an election situation, but um, uh, subcommittees were, were were put together as well as uh, new council president in uh, Ralph Figgy was was elected. Uh, unanimously from the council, um, as well as uh, a replacement for Bob Paul. Oh, that's right. He's Robert retired. Paul uh, yeah. stepped down, retired, yep. uh, spending some more time in Florida with his wife and family. And uh, so uh, we had to uh, appoint a, the, the person that ran against him, uh, Leslie uh, Lefebvre, I believe I'm pronouncing it right. Uh, he was against Bob in that uh, in that race this year. So and that's the way our charter works is that the person that ran against him and received one or more votes. Uh, mm-hmm. You can run. I, I think you need the trigger is the vote. Right. Yeah. Right. You, you need, at least right. One you need to be on the ballot and you that's need right. to get a vote. Well, that's and right. we've had a case where Ward two was vacant for a brief bit 
when um, what's his name Brown left. Yep. Mm -hmm. And there was two a couple that wrote themselves in. They had one vote, and yeah. they had to decide amongst <laughs> themselves. <laughs> Rochambeau. Or have a runoff. It was. Yeah. They had, yeah remember Brian they had Winters. to decide amongst Brian, themselves? Brian Winters was the, the person's name. Is Him and his wife both kind of wrote each other in. And yep. They're divorced now. They, yeah, <laughs> yeah, I'm sure they are. I'm sure they are. And believe oh me, I live, it. I live it. I live it. But it's, um, <laughs> it's it, you know, so it's, it's a little different for every election or a different body. You know, mm -hmm. G&E, uh, as you saw with Tom Flaherty, uh, stepped off to, to run for the for the. the superintendent's job or director's job whatever you want to call it uh and you know went through that process didn't it didn't happen so we had a point we we he withdrew from that office and then we then put him back on as a council and g e commission we got together and then appointed somebody to fill the role mm -hmm. um that's like mm -hmm. that with the school committee as well so the right. school committee and the g e commission are different than what the council is right, right. Enough, so which is, it's just, it's just weird. It's awkward. Like, should that be aligned in the charter? Should that be something that the uh, charter you know, and rules look into? I'm not a huge, I'm not a huge fan of, of two boards getting together to select something that's usually elected. Right. But, but that, um, in, in this council year, is that something that the charter and rules committee should look into? Um, yeah. To align those yeah, elected I mean, boards? it's definitely worth looking into. I can into. understand appointed yeah. boards, you yeah. know, but... Mm -hmm. Elected boards. No, I don't different. have a problem looking at it. I mean, the problem with the charter is, is it's so difficult to change anything. Um, it's a two ballot process. It's a you know the the committee the, the um, uh, residents weigh in. I mean, it is a schlog to get through um, that process. So, but that those two bodies, that's how it happens. I mean, regular commissions, we if they resign, we just we yeah. just appoint them and, mm -hmm. and bang them through. <laughs> the G and E actually has an appointed person in Ed Roman. Um, he's an at-large member because when we increased the wards in town, we went from five to six. You needed a person. We needed an mm -hmm. odd number to kind of... Right. Right. So uh, <coughs> even though, a, you know, a tied motion in all these bodies are a failed motion. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you guys knew that, but... And that's something that we written, wrote into our laws or our, our governing, not our... Not our charter. The rules. Our, yeah, the uh, rules. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. you know, and there's a difference, right? There's a difference between the charter and the council rules. So Yeah, the rules yeah. are the playing field that, like, uh, you know, with anybody, you can write them as you go or change them by whoever's in majority. Yeah. It used to, mm -hmm. you know, we didn't get changed. We changed it maybe a few years back, maybe about five to eight years back. And before we changed it, it was from, like, 1916. It was... <laughs> Pretty much, if there was a tied motion, do you remember that, Callie? Um, yeah, I do. <laughs> yeah. I do. Oh, as wow. a fact, yeah. I, well, I couldn't vote I like then. The show we, women this couldn't vote. Right, that's we true. We weren't allowed, so. Yeah. So they ended up. <laughs> that's, that's a good point. I was uh, home <laughs> cleaning and cooking. My wife might be calling in a minute. So, <laughs> yeah. um, so the uh, the they used to throw the president's vote out or the chairman's vote out. Really? Yeah, to break the tie, which is awkward too, right? right? I right. mean, you can't not count yeah. someone's vote. Right. right. Yeah. So we'll just forget you said that. Yeah, that's yeah. right. You're out. Yeah. You don't it's supposed care. to be a benefit to run the show, <laughs> yeah. not, not a. Not, yeah. so. Interesting. So that that kind of so what happens is is as as the council president, you know, we had a, a meeting, first meeting in January to select a new president in the midterm. Mm -hmm. uh, if it's at the end of the two years, we do it in December. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry. No, that's not no, true. No, you still no, do the first week in January. Just, yeah, I'm sorry. We, so now we do it. We just <laughs> changed it. So now everything is the first week in January. And Ralph uh, was um, nominated. I nominated Ralph. And Dave Flaherty nominated uh, Nick Morganelli. Nick, Nick Morganelli. Yep. Uh, and then what happened, it was a fairly close vote. Fairly close. Kind of, uh, I don't know, eight to five, maybe. I think, it, yeah. Something think like that, that seven, right, six. Yeah. Eight, I, I thought it was, it was eight to yeah. five. Uh, and then what we did was there was another motion to do it unanimously to, to make mm. Ralph Unanimous the president. Yeah. Right. yeah. yeah. So, uh, because both, you know, <clears throat> it's kind of like there's there's certain sides, yeah. and and at the end y'all have to work together. And I, I like the fact that there was a reconsider for unanimous vote saying, hey, yeah. we may disagree, but we all agree that this person will lead us for this year. Yeah, I like that. I yeah. actually do like. That. I don't mind it. I don't mind it, but. It's kind of ceremonial at best. Yeah, I know. Well, we know who voted for who. Yeah. Right. But, it, but it's still... <laughs> nice. that vote well, was in the Westfield news. Right, you know? But that vote is recorded as well. Yeah. yeah. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. But it's still nice to show, hey, going forward, we can still work together on Absolutely. things when we need to. Yeah. And we, we and yeah. that's the whole point. We've seen some doesn't happen always. It no, doesn't no, happen no, at a certain <laughs> level of government. No, no. no. <laughs> yeah. So besides Ralph, what other big changes are coming up in the committees? Uh, so, you know, what Ralph does is one of his... Uh, 
on top of changing seats, so he does the seating arrangements on the uh, council. Which is are those always, going to change again? Uh, it, it will. It will be sh- you know shuffled up. Usually, what we've been doing lately is the, the chair of finance and the chair of L and O, legislative and ordinance committee, kind of sit on right and left of, of Ralph mm. uh, or the president, just because those two committees are kind of the. People will argue this, but it's kind of the hierarchy of the mm-hmm. committee. So, yes, the more um, important. Yeah, and mm-hmm. then, well, yeah. It, well, they come up the most, I feel like. Th- that's right. They do. Like that's that. right. They do. That's right. So Absolutely. Everything goes, I mean, you could do a hundred different things in a hundred different committees, but most of the stuff goes back into l and It has L&O. to go through yeah. l and Because of the Absolutely. Piece. Right. So, uh, and then, so that'll be. And um, would you, just for the, the 20 people listening, l and means? The Legislative and Ordinance Committee. Thank you. Uh, I, I have, that's a Ken question. I yeah. have to go there. Yeah, it is. It, it's it, it's you know it's a lot of just. I mean, legislatively, it's it's more wording based stuff that we have to kind of create and what's uh, legal and what works. Correct, and, correct. Mm-hmm. And then finance, uh, pretty self explanatory. Uh, we a lot of this stuff is is governed by our rules, right? Mm-hmm. So there's charter committees and then there's rules committees. So rules. Our rules created a few ad hoc committees, like charter and rules. We have an ad hoc committee. Mm -hmm. Business development, we have an ad hoc committee. Uh, Those are governed by our rules. But these standing committees, like finance, personnel and action committee, legislative and ordinance committee, are set by our charter. Mm -hmm. There's really nothing we can do about those unless we go through that daunting process of changing the charter. Correct, correct. Uh, get it right the first time. Yes, right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, and unfortunately, it does change probably too quick mm-hmm. uh, in a lot of instances. I mean, I've been on the council uh, for over 18 years. No, I'll be 18 um, coming up. So I'm the longest serving member. Um, so you, you, you kind of have some history on what happens and how it happens. But, uh, and I've, we, listen, I've had, when I was council president uh, one year, we changed LNO to do a five person committee. That didn't make it. It didn't work. Mm-hmm. Um, I didn't want to say no to people, so I added yeah. three, three to five, and just to try to help with quorums and that kind of stuff. And it, it just didn't prove to be something that we should be doing. And um, but the president, after after doing the seating arrangements, um, which is probably more important than the committees in some instances, uh, <laughs> the committees get done. So uh, they'll pick. He'll pick the chair of finance, like I am with. Uh, John Beltrandi and Dan Alley, who was the uh, the chair last year. Correct, mm-hmm. correct. Um, and then legislative and ordinance. Uh, Ralph Figge, um was chair of legislative and ordinance committee, and that's one of the reasons why I nominated him because he really did a fantastic job with that committee. It's it's daunting. It's time consuming. It's it's just something that a lot of people don't want to take on, and Ralph did a fantastic job mm-hmm. doing that. And he had some great members. I mean, you know, with, with Bill Oniski, he w- you know, Bill was very active in that committee, and uh, mm-hmm. I forget the third committee member. Oh, and I, I had it, and I didn't bring it. Um, I, I think it's Nick Morganelli now. Uh, I have it on my iPad, and I'll pull it up before, after the break. But um, it, 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 it's, it's good. I think we're excited. I think we're finding our, our feet, our legs a little bit more. I mean, when mm-hmm. I was council president in 2017, I mean, we had 10 counselors with four years or less. You know, and, it, and, and that's, that's an, an issue, you know. And I was going to ask, because it seems like there's a lot of ins and outs and rules to learn. Yeah. Like, how long does it actually take before you know yeah. what you're doing, sort of? Uh, I, I would it would true. two years. I, I yeah. think a good two years. I think it's important. Um, you, you know, it's nice to get new blood. It's nice to elect new people, but yeah. you have to have experience because right. there has to be someone on the board that says, "Wait, we've been here before. Mm-hmm. This is what happened. This is what the history right. is." Because people will come in on boards. I'm sure you see yeah. this at the Athenaeum <laughs> that people come in. I see it all the time on the boards I'm on. They come in with this <laughs> great idea that they think is wonderful, and let's do this. Yeah. We tried it. Sure. We could try it again, but this is why it didn't work right. five years ago, and they're right. unaware of that. Yeah. So yeah. your experience, Brent, hmm. is really invaluable to the city itself. Well, some people will argue that. Uh, I, no, I understand <laughs> that. And, 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 and for I, better or for worse. I, but, uh, I, I understand that yeah. completely, but, yeah. but that's just a factor that experience matters. Hmm. In, in this situation when you're running a city. Right. It's very hard in city government when somebody of the of the time of service like a happy daily who just retired. Mm-hmm. There's a vacuum after that. Yeah, absolutely. And and if she hasn't had time to mentor people, there's a vacuum. Yeah. Well, mm-hmm. listen, I, I'll, I'll go even one better than that. I mean, uh, Debbie Strykars, who was the auditor for about 20-something years. Now right? a member of my board. So. Yeah, so, you know, yeah. <laughs> hope is she doing the books? No, <laughs> there's a, uh, I still have Mark Moore and doing the, oh, that. She's the oh, assistant good. treasurer. It will be, good, hopefully. Good. <laughs> it's good to have her back in the community because yeah. she really was dedicated to the job. And, and 
so you go from 25 years or I'm not I'm probably killing it's probably 30 yeah. something and then you go to Happy Daily or Mary Daily um, is uh, probably only had called Mary yeah I know right <laughs> couple couple years I mean three four years so that's I mean a huge big vacuum mm-hmm. I mean so we're always playing catch up and we're seeing a, 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 a flux of I, I don't know if we're not making the jobs at, at Westfield or in Westfield more attractive on purpose. Mm-hmm. I don't know if it's just because of the social media piece or the the outcry of government and how bad it is and all the stuff that we keep hearing, you know, the national side happen, but we're not seeing um, people apply for these jobs. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's Interesting. The I mean, we had three <coughs> people apply for our auditor's position. Usually those right. jobs are pretty one. sought after, right? Mm-hmm. And um, I believe Chris Caputo is, is the new person. Coming from Longmeadow. Yeah. And that, you know, yeah. I don't want to. I don't want to put a criteria on something that says that you have to be from Westfield, but there is a benefit to have some people from Westfield within within the ranks of, mm-hmm. of City Hall, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and only only especially maybe not the money jobs. You almost want those. To get, you know, once you come in, you get out of here because yeah. you don't want residents pulling at them and everything else. But you know, there's you know community development director, right? You, you've got like a guy like Joe Mitchell or, or you know Pete Miller. Pete, Pete, Pete Miller. You want someone that's going to be around here more than just eight, ten hours a day. Have a stake. Yeah, and has yeah has an yeah. investment in the city and where it's going and yeah. so forth. So, but that's that's my opinion. Obviously, it's you know I think Springfield has kind of a radius on certain jobs on where you they do yeah. department heads they have do. to live within like five miles of the city limits. Right. I think they do. A little drastic, but what happens if you don't get good candidates? I mean, it's going to be a problem. Yeah. Yeah. And I think we went past our break, Peter. How are we doing? Do we need a break now? Yes. All righty. We will take a break, and we will be back with you in a few moments. Thank you. Support for the community programming of WSKB is provided by Commercial Distributing Company of Westfield. Now in its third generation of family ownership, 
Commercial is one of the premier beverage distributors of Western Massachusetts. The Playsick family and the staff of Commercial Distributing wishes you good times throughout the year and urges you to drink responsibly. Support for Community Radio on WSKB is provided by Betts Plumbing and Heating Supply Company, an independent, family-owned wholesaler serving Westfield for over 50 years, specializing in plumbing, heating, and industrial piping supplies. On the web at BettsPlumbing.com or at 14 Coleman Avenue in Westfield. We thank the generosity of our underwriters. For more information, please contact the Westfield State Foundation at 413-572-8646. It's Tuesday morning from 6 till 8. Wow, it's Tuesday with Bob Plass. Community Radio 89.5 WSKB. Live from the campus of Westfield State University, this is 89.5 FM, WSKB, Westfield. And good morning. You are back with WSKB 89.5. This is Kathy Palmer filling in for Ken Stomsky on Ken's Den. Unfortunately, they are large shoes to fill. I only have a size six. I think it's probably a little bit larger, but I'm <laughs> I'm doing the best I can. I might be able to fit both feet into one shoe and fill I one could, shoe. I could. I <laughs> could. So that would be two feet. Two feet in my mouth instead of one. So that would be good. <laughs> to my far left, we have Dan Paquette. Dan, good morning. Yeah, thanks. Um, yeah. I... They usually call me the side chick. I don't have a nomenclature for you, so you may I'll pick one. I'll be the one. side chick. And the you can, <laughs> the, the, yeah, that's oh, right. We didn't you know. do our sound bites. Peter. I don't do those. Peter. <laughs> yeah. I, I don't do those. And behind the board, of course, we have Peter Coles playing the boss and giving us the eye when we need to come on because neither Dan nor I really have a clue, but we will follow your stead. And to the center on the hot seat this morning, we have none other than Councillor Brent Bean who has been filling us in on some of the changes on the council. And what else do we have this morning, Brent? Well, I know you wanted to go over some of the just the committee changes, and I happen to pull them up here. Okay, so, uh, great. Just so that you have them. Unless, I will say this was last week, so unless there was one or two changes, I'm not anticipating that. But And, and the council president obviously selects these, as we said you know, mm-hmm. a, couple, mm-hmm. a couple minutes ago. And um, He'll go through, you know, he'll have his meetings with people and try to figure out what expertise they bring and what interests they have and and so forth. So um, as far as, I mean, I can just tell you the chairs and then we can go from there. Okay, that'd be great. So Legislative and Ordinance Committee this year is uh, Bill Oniski. He's the Ward 6 Counselor. Um, I'm chairing finance this year. It's probably my fourth or fifth time chairing finance. Haven't done it in a while. Um, Cindy Harris is our Personnel and Action Committee Chair. She's been fantastic. Yeah, yeah, she's wonderful in that role. Personnel in action actually does what? So what nine out of nine out of ten times what they're doing is uh, appointing people. So they'll they'll hire like our finance jobs. So okay. the council there's some jobs that the mayor appoints okay. and we confirm. There's some that the mayor can just hire, mm-hmm. and then there's some that we have to hire. Um, the separation. Right, this is called the separation of powers in the grand scheme of things. Mm-hmm. The finance stuff is all ours. Mm-hmm. So, like the treasurer and auditor are ours. The Makes sense. the uh, purchaser is ours. Mm-hmm. So that yes, the mayor has obviously some role as the manager of that, and that's that's been a bone of contention too. Like in in my view, the mayor is the manager of the entire city hall. Right, he's Any like the court. CEO. Right. But you we actually, you know, we actually hire Karen Fanion too, because yeah. um, she's our city clerk. But mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, we're we're not we're not day to day operation people either, though. Right. So you need someone that they report to, right? So, but we're we're the ones that hire. Yeah. Which is kind of kind of weird, right? So I don't know how how's your job handled. Is that through the board? Whatever I want to do. No, uh, yeah, <laughs> no, no, it's, uh, yeah. I know we don't. <laughs> yeah. Now uh, we, we figure it out. Yeah, uh, uh, my the, lo- the Athenian board. board hires me. Yeah. yeah. So I mean, in their quasi, so, as you mentioned before, mm-hmm. kind of a quasi situation. Um, but then you have like boards and commissions, like the fire commission mm-hmm. and the in the um, police commission, which they're the appointing authority. The mayor appoints that board Mm -hmm. we confirm the board but then they're the ones selecting as they're in the process of doing now the the fire chief yeah fire chief and the in the in the police chief um it's it's 
it's been interesting at best. I'm not yeah. touching that one. <laughs> it's been interesting at best. Um, so, the, you know, again, there's a process there, and they're trying to wade through that with all the legalese as well. So, so that's just a you know a, a different way of hiring someone, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then um, the mayor would hire you know Joe Mitchell, mm-hmm. right? Um, I think we confirm uh, PJ Miller, same kind of thing. City planner Pete Coles. You know, there's there's people out there that it, the system's weird. It yeah. really doesn't make much sense mm-hmm. in my mind uh, because there's a lot of bosses to kind of cater to. Yeah. Um, and then sometimes the 13 of us as a council think we are the day-to-day people at times. <laughs> um, and that shouldn't be the case. You know, you can help facilitate things like a pothole or something like that, but you're right. not operational. It's, it's one thing if, you know, there's <clears throat> we have some strong opinions about department heads, right? Mm-hmm. Good or bad. Um, then, in my opinion, we go to the mayor and we talk about those things. Um, we don't talk about them out in the public. Mm-hmm. I, I just find it very disruptive and very uh, annoying when, when personnel issues become public like mm-hmm. that. Um, that's not the way the process works, though. Every, everything we're supposed to do is kind of above, you know, in that open meeting kind of situation. Mm-hmm. And right. mm-hmm. Correct. It's just not fair to anybody. And, and, I, and I think it's no, one of the reasons why you're not seeing people apply for these jobs either. Yeah. Is because of the, the constant public scrutiny as you're seeing. And the public's not even a part-time person and we're we're part-time and yeah. we don't know the whole story so yeah, yeah. you know you got to get educated when you're really deciding that oh i like this department head i don't like this department head uh, or or not just department heads there, there's other jobs out oh there. Ish, yeah. yes yeah. I, yeah. we understand yeah uh, there's i'm sure a lot of a lot of things you don't know why that there's a certain policy or why they're doing something the way they're doing that's it that's right you know because they're being pushed or pulled in yeah, and a lot of times we go too. into the you know executive session to talk about personnel issues yeah. or, or legal lawsuits mm-hmm. and, and, and so and so forth. Not just personnel. Why are you point at me? I know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> legal <laughs> lawsuits. If you must no, know, no, no, Dan. Just, uh, <laughs> um, it's it's uh, it's something that the public thinks we're hiding stuff from, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and it's really to protect them as well as all of us. Well, yeah, and there's mm-hmm. some state laws that have to that kick in at certain points where they say you cannot discuss personnel issues that's right in the in an open and, and it's just yeah. good good practice not to discuss pending lawsuits mm-hmm. or pending litigation sure. of any sorts in the public yeah well sadly we've gone <clears throat> way over the bend where we think we should know absolutely everything including yeah. how many times you burped in the last hour that's i mean true. it's just Twice. it's not Can't fair there are certain things that should remain private i agree mm-hmm. i agree and then unfortunately i think the the, the loud public right the people that are are, are the, the most loud on this issue don't agree with that and um well. it's just unfortunate and that's why i think in the end we're really not getting one of the main reasons why we're not getting qualified bright energetic conscientious and people aren't choosing it as, a, as a vocation jobs. really right public service uh, yeah no they're not i mean we're seeing that in education also that we're not getting some we're not getting the numbers of people coming into it. Mm-hmm. And when we do get a, a good person who's willing to spend stay. some time, they, they, yeah, I mean, it, you really got to try to hold on with two hands. And, you know, we're seeing some change in the council. They're talking about, you know, some departments need to be only one t- one year terms or two mm-hmm. year terms. And it should coincide with the mayor. And, I, you know, they're, they're, they're already, I mean, they're decent paying jobs, not great paying jobs. There's good benefits in the grand mm-hmm. scheme of things. And that used to be the big attraction. Yeah. Yep. Um, but even that's getting kind it's of starting to moderate chunked out. away. Yeah. yeah, that's getting chunked away as well just because the state's doing it. And mm-hmm. it kind of trickles down to the smaller <coughs> smaller companies or smaller cities and stuff. But uh, it's like, you know, it's like a 24-hour shift for the, for the fire department. Not sure if I'm a big fan of that. But that started way back in, in, in the bigger cities in the state. And it kind of trickled down to us. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I mean, when we first did it, it was great because of the numbers of sick time and vacation. It, it started, well, that's kind of shifted a little bit. So, mm-hmm. um, you know, I, I guess my point is it starts in Boston. We're not Boston. Mm-hmm. We're, we're a different entity altogether. And right. um, we don't, like I said, we had three people apply for the auditor's position. Wow. Three. Wow. That's a, that's a pretty good job. Yeah. You know, yeah. and we used to have 10, 20. Mm-hmm. And you have to, used to get a lot of CPAs right. apply for it to say, well, I might yeah. be able to pull this off. And, and, and it's only getting worse, I think. Um, and uh, I don't know if a lot of people see that. Uh, I, I've just seen it from when I started at, you know, age 28. And, 28. you know, 18 years later, it's, wow. yeah, it, it's just different. It's just different. And, you know, a lot of it, not to get too much into this, and, and but it, it when I was 28 years old and I got on the council, um, I kind of sh- just took it all in 
for two mm-hmm. years at least. Um, even when I tried to speak, you know, some of the, some of the old timers would be like, oh. what, are, what are you doing? Were you on Quiet with Charlie? Yeah. For Snapper. That's right. What are you doing? <laughs> Were you on with Charlie? I was, oh, yeah. Charlie, well, then you Charlie's one it. of the most recent yep. ones that, you know, is, is, God rest his soul now. But he's, he, was, he was there, you know, you didn't say anything no. for the first two years. No, no, no. <laughs> but even no, like no. Lenny Burlingame and, and Bill Chiba yep, and, and Adam Liptak and yeah. Um, yeah. Barbara Swords. Mm-hmm. There was no flies on Barbara either. Cousin and, Barbara. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, so, uh, you know, now I think you see somebody get the job and they go right in full bore. Um, some, you know, some, some figure it out, but most are like, we're, I think we're becoming a, a body that has to run for office every minute of every day. Yeah, and, and that's and that's a problem too. That's reflecting mm-hmm. what's happening that's at the a, national level. I was going to yeah, say yeah, that's yeah. pretty. Yeah. Well and look how well they work. <laughs> and it used to be like 28 years old. I was 28. Yeah. It would be like you put your article in the Westfield paper, and this is kind of your speech, right? Yeah. <laughs> now I'm on TV on the council. Uh, our subcommittees are starting to get become more and more on. on you got social media. Uh, that you can so you, everybody's yeah. looking for some content, right? Yeah, yeah. And um, I think it's really distorting the process and, and really not making for good government. But you know, it does. It, 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 I don't make the rules; I just play within them, right? It so, entitles yeah. a lot of people who don't don't need to be entitled. I think that's sometimes. right. And listen, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not on my soapbox. Believe me, I'm no, not I above know. anything. No, I know. <laughs> I've yeah. had my moments. Believe me, <laughs> and um, and I still, and I'll have my moments. But I, I think if if you can kind of minimize all those and take your opportunity when you when you want to, um, but it's like any board, you know, mm-hmm. people. People want to know that you're doing something good, right. and or or at least paying attention, right? Yeah. yeah. And I mean, you do that with your board as as a, as as the head of that uh, the library, and it, it's. Do you it's, do that, Dan? I do. You know, yeah. Okay, yeah. good. And, and it, you know, the chiefs do it, and you know, and it's not bad. It's just when it's every minute of every day, that's when it becomes tedious. Taxing. Right. So. Are we due for another break, Peter? Yes. Top of the hour. All righty. Top of the hour. See you.
Support for the community programming of WSKB is provided by Bay State Dental. Comprehensive dentistry at 14 convenient locations in Springfield, Chicopee, Longmeadow, West Springfield, Belchertown, East Longmeadow, Ludlow, Northampton, Greenfield, and Wilbraham, as well as 29 Broad Street in Westfield. Bay State Dental makes it a priority to help you achieve and maintain the healthy smile you deserve. On the web at baystatedental.com. Support for the community programming of WSKB is provided by Bay State Noble Hospital, a brand new name for a Westfield institution which is improving the health of our community every day with quality and compassion. Noble Hospital and Bay State Health, better together. We thank the generosity of our underwriters. For more information, please contact the Westfield State Foundation at 413-572-8646. Discussions of local politics, events, happenings, and miscellany potpourri. Ken's Den, Tuesday, 8 to 10. Live from the campus of Westfield State University, this is 89.5 FM, WSKB, Westfield. Good morning, and we are back again with miscellaneous potpourri. Is that it? Potpourri. Yeah. And a potpourri is what? Librarian, you can tell us. Librarian. A, a mixture of stuff. A mixture. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And we are I believe a, that's the Webster definition. We, we are. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty sure. Go on, go on Wikipedia, find yeah, it, find yeah. it, because it'll be really true on Wikipedia. <laughs> Absolutely. Everything, everything is 100% true. Everything on social media is correct. So this morning on WSKB 89.5 FM, coming to you from Westfield State University, we have our guest, and that is Brent Bean from the Westfield City Council. And Brent, you were talking about some of the committee changes and yeah, the just, I, coming up. I know we got kind of pulled off that a little we bit. We did. Uh, <laughs> uh, which here is fine. on this show, happens. shiny yeah. things and squirrels, yeah. cupcakes. Uh, so we, we did a personnel and action committee. I, I think I was talking about Cindy Harris. Um, she's the veteran over there on that on that committee, so she's going to chair that again. And again, they do uh, a lot of the commissions and some of the hires that the city council does appoint. Uh, auditor, treasurer, purchaser. They The interview process will funnel through them mm-hmm. and then f- to the full council. Uh, license uh, license uh, committee is uh, John Beltrandi, License okay. Resources. Pretty self-explanatory. A lot of the permits that come through, um, not not alcohol permits. That's it's something that goes to the license commission, but everything else, kind of like um, taxi licenses. If we had one in Westfield, that kind of thing, that would go through there. Uh, public health and safety, pretty broad committee. Um, public health is uh, Marianne Babinski this year, okay. Ward She's One Councilor. Councilman. Yep, yep, Woman. fantastic, Woman. very energetic. Very, you know, loves loves that kind of of uh, venue. Um, and that's these now when you start getting into the rest of these committees, they get a little a little fluffier than than what the la- last three or four that we just talked about because it's they become some kind of catch alls and they they become mm-hmm. they really can't do much without. Any real authority without yeah. going through the uh, like the legislative floor. right legislative yeah. ordinance and, and so forth. So, uh, public health and safety. We have natural resources, which was it's uh, the same chair of Marianne Babinski. So Marianne. that's water resources, yeah. that kind of stuff. So it's natural resources, um, and and it's become more and more important, right? Because of the, what we've gone through in the city with the, our water quality and mm-hmm. that process. Now, again, that it that committee just kind of sets it gives us a venue to talk about that kind of stuff. Right. Mm -hmm. We could really put in like if we were to talk about water quality, we could put it in public health and safety. You can put it in finance because it costs money. You can put it in legislative and ordinance because there's ordinances that govern it. So this is where we try to spread the wealth around. So not one committee (coughs) gets inundated. Mm -hmm. But also to that, that committee can work out some details and then have a joint meeting with like a legislative and ordinance to find out, Okay, how we've got some great ideas. How do we make that happen? Home rule. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yep. Yeah. Um, zoning planning and development is by uh, Nick Morganelli. Uh, so zoning planning and development, kind of self-explanatory. A lot of the zoning and planning, land use stuff would go through there. Everything they do, m- unless it's just kind of informational, needs to go to legislative and ordinance committee and turned into an ordinance, turned into some kind of rule or law. Or mm-hmm. So if we change an ordinance, you know, z- zoning and planning says, yeah, this project warrants the zone change. Mm-hmm. Then, el- and then legislative and ordinance committee would come in and say, okay, let's do it. Then it has to come out of this committee. The problem is, 
when you start getting into other committees, and we're, you know, I mentioned this the other night on the, on the council floor, is that we start delaying things. So, you know, if 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 yeah. if, if case in point, um, we did a zone change up off of Southampton Road recently. So if we were to put that in zoning planning and development first, minimally that's a two week transition, right? Mm-hmm. But then L and O gets it, legislative and ordinance, so they get it, and they need a first and second reading to do that. So then it's two weeks for the first reading, then two weeks for the gotcha. second. A lot of times it goes beyond that because there's more information we're looking for, and it, it warranted we need right. more information. But a lot of times it gets delayed, and government is already slow enough, as we all know, yeah. right? So you, you try not to hold stuff up well by just sending it back and forth i've, I've tried to hold stuff up but yeah <laughs> <laughs> but that's for the right reasons that's for the right reasons. no but you know what Do i mean so we don't want to get too far into because then we become a non you know we don't want to be a, we want to be a friendly city to, to business because mm-hmm. of the tax implications and so forth and there's other reasons but th- in my opinion that's one of the most most important one um government relations pretty self-explanatory we start talking about uh, maybe state, federal government. We can we can talk about issues surrounding that. Even local government, we can talk about that. Um, uh, city properties is is a committee. Same thing. Uh, anything relative to city properties, uh, you know, we can t- like well, like government relations is uh, we're we're talking about the Westfield Gas and Electric committee being on TV. So we took that because there are. Uh, governing body a city go- you know they're a body of, of an elected officials we put that in there to, to talk to talk about it um pete's been involved a little bit and you know there is some finance because we'll have to maybe buy some equipment and but in our opinion i think they're pretty outfitted over there and we're looking for them just to be on tv like every other elected board in the city mm-hmm. uh, as well as the planning board so um i don't know if they're going to want to do that or not but we're going to make inroads to try to make that happen I, i've been on that for like the last six or seven years and i'm trying to make that happen and hopefully this year we'll, we'll make it happen um city properties i talked about long long range finance mostly bonds right we're talking or or what is our five-year projection of what the city looks like that that's where a lot of that work gets done mm-hmm. i like that committee just because finance gets more into the the day-to-day, day-to-day tra- yeah. you know yeah. this one has a you know with day flarity and day's really good at this uh is really just getting the bigger picture on where the city is some of us might disagree on what his outcome, what we think right. it is, but in the end, he's, he's doing got a lot a good, of work. Yeah, he's yeah. got a good mind for that. He is. He's doing a lot of work, and he puts a lot of time and effort in there, and I'm glad he's, he's chairing that again. Even though I'd like to see him on finance with me, but it was just something that he didn't, didn't want to do. He uh, did it out for a lot of years. He though. did. You get yes, burnt he did. out. Yep. Yes, he did. Yep. You get burnt out. Um, and then business development is an ad hoc. <clears throat> so that's something that um, I That was with. formed in the last... A couple, a couple years, of years ago, ago yeah. yeah. So I was council president, and th- you know, there's been forms of these throughout the. Mm-hmm. Year, and we're just looking to try to how do we attract business? How do right. we get better at packaging what tools we have, like you know, TIF agreements or better uh, gas and electric rates? Mm-hmm. Um, all the all the things that we can provide as a city, you know what mm-hmm. I mean? Uh, all the services we have is is pretty impressive, right? We can all agree to that. We all. Oh agree. yeah, this is a pretty you well know. run city overall. Yeah, we're self we're self contained in my mind. Uh, we really are. I mean, we could, you know, and I say it all the time: airport, college, right, hospitals. That you know, we're we have a good residence base. We have yeah. open land for commercial use. We have our our, res, our commercial base isn't that great, so we've got to get better at that. And a wonderful Athenaeum. And, and, and a wonderful yeah, Athenaeum. Sure. I mean, the, but the sources of information are... Best are, library in town. Yeah, yeah, that's right. That's right. Yeah, I like that. It's good. Um, but, you know, and even, even the, the school system and, um, you know, we're all... I mean, we have a Vogue Tech, right? You know, the, the academy. And, mm. I mean, you can't... You show me any other community that has what we have. That's especially the size we are, mm-hmm. right? We do, and, um, and we do impressive. have activities for people. We do have a lot of adult activities with the artworks that come along. Well, we have the arts, mm-hmm. too, which, you know, is, <laughs> is going said, away a lot in municipalities. Mm-hmm. And it's <laughs> not, the cultural council helps a lot, but it's more... Um, <laughs> Funded it's a, by it's the community. A, it's a grassroots yeah, effort right. between yeah. WOW and, and, and the new art artworks. council that's coming along, yep. artworks. And then you have Park and Rec. And, and the city actually offers some really good programs for families sure. at a very good rate. Sure. You have the Athenaeum that's offering programs for children. So there's a lot of family things now, Brent, right. that should be bringing in young families to Westfield. Well, and in the end, I, I mean, Dan, you can speak to. I mean, it costs money. Yeah, you know, it's it's not it's not a cheap endeavor by any means, and you try to be, 
not that we're trying to be everything to everybody, but we're trying to provide services across the board to affect everybody's mm-hmm. life. Yeah, right. And, right. and for the better. Yeah. You know? have to improve everyone's life, but then makes the whole community better as well. Yeah. And, and so that's where I, you know, people got to understand that things do cost money. Um, we're, we're the second biggest land mass in, in, in the Commonwealth. I think it's third now. Oh, why? Someone, so, really? some, somebody got bigger? Well, I thought it was, I thought, <laughs> I thought it was um, Boston, Plymouth, and us. I don't know. I like the second better. Okay. I'll turn yeah. it into the yeah. first for next year, but we're going to go. <laughs> That's it. We're taking over Agawam. That's right. Let's go. Yeah. Let's go. We are. Fired up. We want Southwick back. Yeah. So they got a lot of big hair over <laughs> Agawam. I don't know. I don't know if I want that. I, 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 I won't fit in. I won't fit in. Um, so I guess that's, you know, with all these services and how all these things that make us great, they cost money. And mm-hmm. when, when people do get upset about where the city budget is going or what, what kind of money we're spending on, on infrastructure or schools or um, I, it is what it is. And well, everything else has gone up. So that's right. It's, it's only that's right. if I go to the grocery store, everything's gone up there. Yeah. So yep. when the city purchases items... Yeah, it's right. it's gone it's more up. Expensive for everything you're purchasing is going to make the project more That's expensive. Right. Absolutely, I blame it on the dual income. Ever since dual income, every, yeah. everything went up after dual income. Yeah, <laughs> you know, you know, you know business has found a way to make money. Mothers and fathers, or husbands and wives, all decided to you know they they got into the workforce together, and all this you know all of a sudden there was more money to be had. Right, and. I know people are and like, yeah, whatever, Brent, but that's kind of where I see the pro- all change. The progression, right, was right after we gave women the right to vote. Oh, it's a, oh here oh, we go. Oh, no, no. <laughs> uh, I, wait a minute. This coming that. from a progressive? I, yes, I do oh. not actually think that. <laughs> yes, that <laughs> did come out of your mouth. You go home and explain <laughs> yeah. it. Yeah. She's going to no. give you the wagging finger in yeah. a second. Yeah. Yeah. I, you're going to get the finger from me, yes. And you, you do. Well, my cows work hard, but they, <laughs> the pay they get is just terrible. Yeah. I'm telling you. It's, I, won't, I won't use that word <laughs> but it's that pay yeah. for the cows you know i just oh, well. you know it took, when you when you talk about cost of things you know for the for the the for where we are as a council um the problem i'm seeing is that rather than we're we're, we're, we're trying to do is when we're always trying to save money right we're always trying to be more efficient we're always trying to you know cut the dollar but we don't want when, when it doesn't happen and we really need to spend some money, I mean, right now we're, we're looking to, um, not me, but finance, last, last year's finance is looking to increase the stormwater fee. Stormwater fees Saw that. Yeah, is, 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 is something, you know, what, what pollutes the water more, right? It's the groundwater yep. that comes in off runoffs and all that. So that's that, what, what that is. Um, and we have a lot of mandated projects that we have to do to our dams and so forth. Mm-hmm. So that body is is looking to increase that stormwater. And I saw the yeah. rationale by it because I sat through all of those meetings in finance right. last year. Right. And the rationale makes sense. Yeah, it, it does. Where I have a problem with it is that we turn around and say, okay, we we're <clears> gonna <throat> we're looking to not increase our tax dollars two and a half percent, right? Where we only can do that up to a certain point. And yeah, people argue it goes up more than that because of your house evaluation. I, I can appreciate that. But we turn around and give back a, you know, a few million dollars out of our coffers to offset the tax rate. And then we turn around and raise everybody's fees on stormwater. So it's, I guess, which... It's a shell game. It, it is a you shell know, game. Yeah. And, and you know, don't, don't let anybody fool you. We're still raising money. We're increasing funds. We need to because of roads and in my and we don't put enough money in our, our, our school department. I, you know, so I mean, we can all pick our things. You know, and we talk about the stormwater stuff and the list of projects. All of them need to be done. Yep. But I, I might not want that tenth one done until the fifteenth one is done. You know what I mean? So everybody has their own ideas on where to go. Um, mm-hmm. I just have a huge issue with all of a sudden, hey, I'm trying to save you money, and then we turn around and we're raising you over here. So mm-hmm. it's disingenuous. Right, but the other thing, too, is is uh, the property tax goes into the general fund, mm-hmm. whereas this would stay, the stormwater fees would stay with the stormwater f- Wouldn't it go right in? It does. There's it? a purpose. Yeah. There's a purpose. Right. But this is where I go back and then run for mayor. Be the executive. Be somebody that controls that funds. And then when those funds aren't used appropriately in your own mind, run for office. Call out the mayor. That's the process. Mm-hmm. So I, I, because things come up. We had, we had to fix the balustrades, right, on the, on the, on the mm-hmm. bridge. It wasn't something we wanted to do. 
Right. Yeah. Well, we had to do it. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Two hundred eighty thousand right? dollars. You want somebody falling in the drink? Yeah. yeah. So you know, we we got some, we got most of the money back, which is fantastic because of our relationships. Mm-hmm. We didn't get it all back, um, but so that things happen. Mm-hmm. Um, some are more important than others, and mm-hmm. that's where I, rather than always trying to put pots of money together for certain use. I rather have the visionary of the of the city. In this case, it's Brian Sullivan. Last year, it was um, Dan Kanapik. Um, before that, it was um, Mike Belanger. Mike Belanger. Wait, wait, you hurt me with Mike Belanger. Yeah, I know. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> and um, uh, and then before that, it was Rick Sullivan. So yeah. you know, everybody has their own vision. The problem is sometimes it changes too quickly. Yeah. Right. You know, counselors change, mayors change, department mm-hmm. heads change. You need some continuity. You know, you need you need you need people to hold on to the vision of the of the person before them mm-hmm. to a certain extent. Well, at least yeah. to let other people know what that was. Yeah. And if you want to continue with that as the chief executive, you can. If you want to change it or modify it or yeah. come out with your own, at least you know where the city was headed before that. Sure. Mm-hmm. Sure. No, I agree. I agree. So we are overdue on another break, Peter. Yep. Again. Underwriting for the community programming of WSKB is provided by the Boys and Girls Club of Greater Westfield, serving the youth of the Whip City and surrounding communities since 1969. More information on the Great Futures Club for ages 3 to 5, happening weekdays, and the Club Teen Center for ages 11 and older, weekdays from 6.30 till 8 p.m., go online at bcgwestfield.org or visit the club at 28 West Silver Street. The Boys and Girls Club of Greater Westfield, Great futures start here. Underwriting for WSKB's community radio programming is brought to you in part by Dunkin' Donuts, providing new handcrafted espresso drinks and all-day breakfast sandwiches. There's more to love with DD Perks, a loyalty program that's loyal to you. On the web at DunkinDonuts.com and at several locations throughout Westfield, including the Ely Campus Center. We thank the generosity of our underwriters. For more information, please contact the Westfield State Foundation at 413 413- Five seven two, eight six four six. Discussions of local politics, events, happenings, and miscellany potpourri. That's what you'll find on Ken's Den, Tuesdays from 8 till 10. 
Live from the campus of Westfield State University, this is 89.5 FM, WSKB, Westfield. Tell us about that. Oh, boy. Okie dokie, and we are back once more. We've been talking to Brent. We're really getting some education here on the council, <laughs> yeah. which is always yeah. a good thing for our, yeah. as, as as Ken would put it, for our 20 listeners. But he did he did make the statement we could be up to 21. Dan. Well, a lot of times when he's away, he tries to listen in, so he may be the 21st listener listening to be, his own show. That, that, wait. He's in Vegas. He's, he's sleeping he's right now, yeah, man. Yeah. I think it jumps listen. dramatically when Ken's not here. <laughs> <laughs> Triples. So it's viewership. gone down yeah. today because he's not. I'm hurt. You hurt me, Brent. No, no. We no, actually no, get more no, listeners. He said you got 60 listeners Just, today because Ken's <laughs> the opposite. Yeah, yeah we get more listeners when he's my... Oh, well, it must be you, Dan. It's you, Dan. It's you and Brent. So, Brent, what what else have you got to educate us on today? Tell us more. Uh, we were talking about the winter. Are we ready for the winter yeah. storms? Um, yeah, I think we're really ready because we haven't had any winter. <laughs> Wait a minute, that's a question um, for Dave Phillips. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I mean, we're, you know, I, I, the winter is always a, a drag on our finances, obviously, with, with treatment of roads and, and plowing of roads. And we've seen, you know, other than today, right, um, mm. in a lot of you know, think we're not going to have a dry a dry summer. We've had one snowstorm. We got plenty of water, right? So we had too much water. Y- well, yeah. But we've had one snowstorm this year, and that was in November. Right. Yeah. That's it. I don't yeah. know. I, that was the only plowable snow that I know of. Yeah, it was like eight inches or yeah. or so. We've always yeah, varied from from in the budget from like a, a hundred thousand dollars to four hundred thousand dollars that we actually put in the, the budget. Um, it's one of the, I think it's the only account I, that I could you can, yeah, deficit spend that you can definitely, you're like Bob, Bob Plass today. You want to I know. finish my thoughts? Absolutely. Too, <laughs> <laughs> well, because and, sitting um, here for no. four years, I start to uh, know these things. Yeah. 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 yeah no, like, well, I won't go there. I won't go there. <laughs> um, so it is the only one that you can deficit spend in. And, and what normally happens, we do take free cash and dump it on there. Mm-hmm. Uh, we try to get better with it, but like if, if we were to get better like this year, we would think, oh, we're going to spend a million bucks. That, we're, mm-hmm. we're always right around a million dollars, right? Yeah. We're not going to spend anywhere near a million dollars, knock on wood. You know, um, Unless we get hammered right. the next if month and a half. This way. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. mean, I mean, even, even you know, we're already a month in, so that month of expenses that usually we have. Mm-hmm. So that's great news for us. And um, I, I, I think in the end, um, people are fairly happy with, with the plowing and the, and the treatment of roads. Um, I've seen... A, a more preventative tactic in the last maybe three, four, five years. Is it that brining stuff? Yeah, it's kind of the. the, the I always it's like I a call, salt solution. It's like beer. It's like hops, right? It's it's they're spraying like this a briny thing. Yeah, 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 yeah. I've been it's told it's like hops, but I, I don't know. It smells. I know that much, and it's better for the environment. And you use less salt. And the way they salt the roads now, they're letting them. You know, I had a couple of uh, neighbors of mine call me and say, you know, they're dumping too much salt on the road and. And I was like, okay. And you look, and there's these piles of salt in the middle of the road. Well, that's that's a way they do it, right? So it's oh, when, when the moisture starts, it, then it starts ah. kicking it. Not only that, but the I've cars that. the cars spread the salt out instead yeah. of the spreader spreading the salt out. Interesting. Mm. So this way, you're not hitting the grass. You're not you're not wasting. Yeah. You're not banging it. it off cars. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so those huge salt pellets. Keep that in mind. Yeah, right. right. Yeah. yeah. No, that's good to know because I've yeah. seen that and I've wondered why is that big pile in the middle of my room? Well, and I didn't know top. until someone called me on it, and I was, you know, I asked Dave Billups, yeah. uh, and he was like, "No, it's kind of this is the new way of doing it." And yep. Most communities are doing it this way, and then you'll see Westfield State too with that with that solution, that briny solution, whatever you want to call it. Is it, I, I don't know if it just prevents the the it it, it allows things to melt quicker and I, not you, freeze up. You pre-treat so. it, and as the stuff's falling, it starts to melt because it's yeah. in, it's an, on the surface and it's soaked into the surface a little bit, mm-hmm. so it doesn't allow it to adhere to the surface. Yeah. So, so yeah, we're, we're getting better. Attention. Yeah, so we're getting better. Uh, you know, with that and. You know, it's just New England's New England, and it's what you got to do. And, you know, unfortunately, I, you know, my my brother and I talk about this. My brother works for MassDOT, and, you know, they their policy is, you know, it's it's wet roads. You know, that when, when the snow falls, it's wet roads. You wonder where our money goes. I mean, try to, when you have a massive snowstorm, and you're only, your, your main purpose is just to make sure the roads are wet, that's a lot of money being spent mm-hmm. on those roads. And so people were getting a little... You know, I don't know, not selfish, but like when the road's bad, 
It's okay. Drive slower. Yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> Don't drive like a nut. You know what I but mean? It, it's like your car will slide. Yeah. That, that first snowstorm of the year where nobody knows how to drive anymore and they forgot that, oh, yeah, in the winter I got to drive slower. Even if I have a four wheel drive That's right. pickup truck or whatever, yeah. you know, like the they're worst, still going 80 yeah. and then they flip over. The worst type of snowstorm is like less than an inch because it instantly compacts down onto the road and became, makes it a skating rink. Mm -hmm. I said, so, so when I see that, I mean, even. You know, I'm going to get in trouble for this comment, but, you know, even with the, the quality of roads in, in town or any any city or town, um, and we, we, there's some bad roads, right? And people do want, and we did an unbelievable job of paving this year. I mean, we paved a ton of stuff. Oh, yes, you did Prospect Street yeah. one side. I was, I literally, my jaw dropped. Yeah, which is I'm great. driving down, Pro, and all of a sudden I hit that smooth. Yeah. Bit. Oh, my gosh. Yes, yes. It was like a washboard. You're welcome. Washboard. You're welcome. Oh, <laughs> I was out there myself with a shovel. It, you know? it, it, yeah. I saw you. Yeah. I, I, yeah. I took yeah. pictures of you and I put it up on, <laughs> on social media. Brent Bean is doing the roads. But that's where, like, I, I did not see it. And, <sighs> but please forward it to me so I can put it up on my Facebook page. Yeah. <laughs> like and share. Uh, <laughs> So that that's kind of where, like, I, I do get a little irritated with it. And, and there are obviously some roads that are, like, I look at Root Road. They, they finished some of that with Lockhouse Road, and, and they're making their way up there. That's That road's terrible. And I'm sure we could get 50 callers with 50 different roads. But yep. it costs a tremendous amount of money. To do all these roads, yeah. And it's not because Especially of, if you have to rebuild the road, too. Right. The city doesn't set those costs. Right. <laughs> you know, uh, the state has a ridiculous pricing system you know the the bid laws and the i forget the number can of i give whatever. a pet peeve alert Go for ahead. you yeah this is your pet peeve alert what is it prevailing wage oh prevailing wage, prevailing like, wage. It's, 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 from the state it's terrible well and it's terrible i get why they did it and i understand the process and I, I don't i don't know enough about um the bid processy i guess but i know why some of this stuff was put in place and it's just it's ridiculous and then you you know you pave a road Within a year, two years, three years, it starts coming up, or you know, maybe maybe five years. Well, we have no recourse. We have no way of going back to those people and saying, you know, hey, you got to come back and fill this stuff. You got to fix it. You got to do whatever. It's like fixing your roof. If you have one little hole in your roof, you got to fix your roof. It's mm -hmm. the same thing with a road. It just totally expands. So that's where I'm like, everybody, take a breath. You can slow down a little bit. Everybody's, we're all going 100 miles an hour on, on all the stuff that we need to do because of family, kids, you know, work, right, private life, whatever it might be. And um, I, I, I guess, and people are like, oh, great. You know, uh, our roads are in pretty decent shape, but we are, a, we do have a pretty big land mass and, and miles of roads to right. take care of. I think it's 144 or something like that, miles of road in yeah. the city. Now, now everybody, like the council will bang and say the roads are the number one thing. That's their opinion. Um, I, I I know roads are important. There's no doubt about it. I think infrastructure is a little bit more important when it comes to water, sewer, and, and so forth, gas, and, and electric. Even, you know, Whip City Fiber is really important to people. Mm -hmm. So <coughs> and libraries. Yeah, and, and libraries. <laughs> and libraries. <laughs> you, have, you have Whip City Fiber in there. You we must do. Have, yeah, we so do. that's fantastic. It's glorious. Glorious. <laughs> high-speed it? Whip City Fiber. It's, it's actually high-speed. Yeah. It's not like what Comcast says. You know what I mean? It's like... Eh. Highish okay. yeah. speeds. Highish <laughs> speeds. Sort of Don't go on it. Highish yeah. speeds. So, you know, all those other things are important. I think the school department's important. I think it's, you know, something that it's, that's our silver bullet. They're good. We need to, they should be, you know, they should be, you know, palaces. They should, you know, we should pay more, you know, for, for that, for those educating our, our, our kids. Uh, maybe because my kid is a sophomore and junior well, in the high school. But I just think it's, it, 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 it you want them to get educated. You want them to find good jobs. You want them to stay in town. You want them to work and be, you know, f be able to solve those problems in the future, mm -hmm. right? All that kind of stuff. So, um, that's but that's my opinion. Well, I th I think that in in terms of education, because as you know, I spent forty fifty years yeah. in education. Mm -hmm. I think that we have a very narrow mind about it. I think we say, well, I don't have any kids. That's right. So I don't have to pay for it. I agree. But you're not paying to educate. I'm not paying to educate your child. Mm -hmm. I'm paying to educate the future person who's going to take my money in the grocery store and needs sure. to know how to make change. I'm paying the person who's going to come and do architecture or who's going to come and do engineering sure. or who's going to be my medical work in my medical facility that's what i want mm -hmm. and when we go home and complain about 
somebody at a store who didn't know how to read a price tag, you know what? That's education. Mm -hmm. Right. And if we haven't educated them, if they don't know how to wait on a table properly, that's our fault. That's, uh, yours specifically, that's, but yeah. No. Uh, it, well, yeah. It, well, it is mine. Yeah, I'm, I'm willing to blame anybody. <laughs> it, it, it is me personally. I will take that that on yeah. that mantle on. But that's the narrow mind that people have with education. You're not educating children. You're educating citizens of your town mm-hmm. to take their place sooner right. or later. And, and if they're not educated, you can send them to the library or and you, we you can help further their education. Further their education. Say like there our new uh, conversational ESOL class that we're starting up. Yes. Um, <laughs> can, can we go to break and then we'll come back and see what Brent has to say to finish up and then get to what Dan has to tell you? And that'll be it. Thank you. Support for the community programming of WSKB is provided by Bay State Dental. Comprehensive dentistry at 14 convenient locations in Springfield, Chicopee, Longmeadow, West Springfield, Belchertown, East Longmeadow, Ludlow, Northampton, Greenfield, and Wilbraham, as well as 29 Broad Street in Westfield. Bay State Dental makes it a priority to help you achieve and maintain the healthy smile you deserve. On the web at baystatedental.com. We thank the generosity of our underwriters. For more information, please contact the Westfield State Foundation at 413-572-8646. Friday mornings is something different on 89.5 FM. It's JP's Talk About Town. Community Radio. 89.5 WSKB. Live from the campus of Westfield State University, this is 89.5 FM, WSKB, Westfield. 
Good morning. Welcome back. This is Kathy Palmer on Ken's Den, WSKB 89.5 FM, coming to you from Westfield State University. And we are winding down, having talked to Brent Bain for a while here, and I hope that some of you people have learned some new things about the city of Westfield. We also have Dan Paquette online, and Dan has a few things to share with us. So, Brent, are there any messages that you want to give us in the end? Um, you know, I, I guess, you know, I, I've, I always say this when, when I get on the radio and some other things i mean we're 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 definitely doing a lot of good things mm-hmm. i mean i think i think the council is is poised to you know we have more experience now with the council um we we have we have uh, ralph figgy who's going to be leading that that charge um I, I think in the end civility with with the residents and, and other counselors is probably a priority for all of us um i've gotten away from it a few years back i think we've all gotten better in the last few years um, we definitely disagree on topics, but overall, I think we're 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 in a better place than where we were four years ago. Excellent. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, Excellent. you know, there are some b- bigger vision topics out there. Um, I'm not saying we don't get caught up in the minutia, but you know, we are talking about strategic planning. We are talking about uh, infrastructure planning, um, rather than kind of reacting to the problems and kind of just putting out the fires, kind mm-hmm. of say. We are going through a major transition in, in, in town, though. We are going through, um, one, it's going to be an election year, right? That's, that's first and foremost. But secondly, we're, we, we, we were hiring a new police chief. We're going to be hiring a new fire chief. We're, gonna, we're hiring a new auditor. Well, we did hire a new auditor. We hired a new treasurer. Um, and there's other jobs out there that are, 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 are being replaced within the city. And um, I'm, we're very lucky to have... Um, Stepan Zaporowski is kind of a, 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 you know, a steadfast person in the school department, so that'll help. Um, but there's a lot of transition, and, and I, I hope people understand that with transition comes you know, learning and, mm-hmm. and just being a little bit more civil um, once we talk about all these topics and just you know, understand and get some backstory rather than just throw your comments up on the social media stuff and it, it does nobody any good um i've tried to stay off of it recently and i mean i look and uh, you know i used to get my butt kicked pretty good on that um s- some fairs most of it's not fair but um like i said i got to deal with my large family in town as it is so uh um, <laughs> you get enough of it uh, yeah and it, and it and it's just we've got to get to a place where we can really talk some things out and it doesn't always have to be at in the microphone it can be in a subcommittee. It can be in a, in a general conversation between counselors or department heads. And, it, you, know, this, the, you know, the citizens need to know everything of every waking minute. I'm a, I'm a, I disagree with that because I, I would agree with it if it wasn't always just nitpicked because you're throwing ideas out and really having a discussion. Just because you say it doesn't mean you're going to do it, doesn't mean it works, doesn't mean any of that. Mm-hmm. And just because someone says something first and loud enough doesn't mean it's true, too. Yeah. So... Always just do your due diligence out there and, and, and try to talk to everybody on either side. Um, we definitely have some counselors, uh, 13 of us. There's a range, right? We have the one in 13 on way ends of the scale, and then there's some happy mediums in the middle, and, um, uh, which is a good thing, which is a good mm-hmm. thing. And, I, and I, 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 I like, personally, I like all the counselors that we have. Um, I get a little frustrated with sometimes some of the, the way people go about things. And um, I think we all need to just kind of, talk stuff out and I, I think we're getting there and make it work That's well it. Yeah. thank you very much brent we appreciate all of your yeah, information thank you. this morning yeah i thank appreciate dan and, and, and kathy thank you so much thank you for your time um dan you had a few things about the athenaeum that you wanted to bring up so yeah. now would be a really good time peter <laughs> you know we, we had another break coming up can we just do double breaks at the end or what do you want to do well, you can do a quick break no song okay let's do a quick break then Underwriting for WSKB's community radio programming is brought to you in part by Dunkin' Donuts, providing new handcrafted espresso drinks and all-day breakfast sandwiches. There's more to love with DD Perks, a loyalty program that's loyal to you. On the web at DunkinDonuts.com and at several locations throughout Westfield, including the Ely Campus Center. We thank the generosity of our underwriters. For more information, please contact the Westfield State Foundation at 413 572 8646. Friday mornings is something different on 89.5 FM. It's JP's Talk About Town. Community Radio. 89.5 WSKB. 
from the campus of Westfield State University. This is 89.5 FM, WSKB, Westfield. All righty, welcome back. And we're on the downside. We have a few minutes left. So, Dan Paquette, I am going to turn it over to you. All right. Well, because we, we're very excited about a new program we have starting on uh, January 16th. Um, we're going to be offering an ESOL conversations class. So it's a, a group of people that'll get together. You have to have some basic English, but I, I mean, really rudimentary, basic kind of stuff. Um, so it'll be a chance for people to come together and the instructor will have you know topics or discussion points or they'll watch a video together or something and then just get into groups and just talk about it so they can practice their English. And um, uh, I think it's going to be a really great class and, and it'll be good for you know, a lot of non-native people who you may see at you know, restaurants or in service jobs who, who have a lot of customer interaction and want to get better with that. I think that'll be really helpful. Is, is for there them. a pre-registration or do they just come? So you can, re- we want you to register because the teacher wants to just talk to everyone before the first class just to see what the levels of people are because you can have somebody who's, you know, pretty advanced and, you know, can sort of help lead the groups and then other people who may be on, you know, still really basic learning level. Um, so she, so we want some pre-registration so we know where people are, but it's going to be going on through May. Um, mm-hmm. So if you can't come to the first week or any of the weeks, you know, it's fine. It's, it's a drop in kind of thing oh, as okay. well. You know, and, so. and where would it be in the Athenaeum? It'll be in our committee room. Um, Upstairs? No, the one down where the high set classes are also at night. Okay. So this will be in, in the morning. There'll be this class. And then in the afternoon Got night. Gotcha downstairs. The, yeah. yeah um, the one. Out, if you come in the Elm Street doors, you go down the stairs That's to the left and it's right down there. Um, so we're, we're really excited to be able to offer that. We had some ESOL classes in the past and, you know, we lost, we didn't have some funding for, it, and then we were doing the renovation. So now the renovations are over. I've been waiting to bring this back in now that we have space to <laughs> hold classes again. Anything else? Yeah, I guess, uh, we got a little bit of time. We have you some, do? um, uh, the next, um, speaker series, it, um, is January 23rd and that's gourmet mushrooms of the Northeast. Ooh. So that that sounded really okay. interesting. Uh, so it's part of the 350th as well. The next upcoming concert is, is always a popular one. That's February 7th. That's the Westfield High and Tech Academy Jazz Band. Oh, nice. Uh, they always do a great job, and, and they put on a fantastic show. So I'm looking forward to seeing them yet again. Uh, if you have children at home, I can tell you a few of the children's programs coming up. Do you know how old I am? Uh, yeah, <laughs> right. I'm talking about our listener. <laughs> oh, okay. All right, we're good. Uh, so that um, there's a building blocks club, which I don't. Uh, we've had this for a long time, but that's coming up again. Uh, that's a Lego club sort of uh, happening. The Reed to Rover returns on the 19th. That's the Saturday. Do you, I've talked about Reed to Rover. I don't know if you yes, know that. Where you yes, read to a yes, dog. Yes, I know what that is. Um, the next family movie is on the 26th. We're showing the movie Smallfoot. Hmm, I'm not so, familiar with that one. Oh, yeah. It, I didn't see it. It looks pretty cute. It's, um, in essence, there's a bunch of Bigfoot or Sasquatches out there, and then they <laughs> run into a human, oh, and funny. they call it Smallfoot. Uh, that's my best uh, yeah, I think uh, I, interpretation I, yeah, of that it was movie. A, it's an animated film, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, so I know my daughter <clears throat> wants to see that as well. Um, and then a Pajama Story Time okay. coming up. I, I love that one, so... Those are the main things Excellent. happening at the library. In the and next we have few a weeks. couple things happening here in Westfield. We have the speaker series tomorrow night, is it, Peter? For the 350? Yes. Shay's Rebellion, and Shays I believe Rebellion. that's at the one of the church, first church? Yeah. I believe uh, it is at the first church. Yeah. I'm not exactly <clears throat> sure, but you can find the information online. We also have... Um, Westfield350.org. Uh, Westfield. I'm looking yes. at it now. Yeah. Yes, you're absolutely correct. And then uh, I have Time in Westfield, which is the musical that's going to be about the city of Westfield. Mm-hmm. So, Dan... Mm-hmm. If you want to be part of Westfield history, yeah, because that is important. Don't we all? Yep. Um, and on stage, <laughs> we have an informational meeting coming up this Sunday at the Westfield Women's Club at 4 o'clock. Okay. For anybody who's interested in the project, it's not only about people that want to get on stage, but also about uh, anybody who thinks they would like to be part of it. it um, I, I'll say I'm interested. I want to be part of it. I am taking my daughter to Great Wolf Lodge on Sunday. So That's fine. We, we, we know where to out find there. You know where to find me exactly we know where to find you and how to get to you so we it was a lot of fun when we that. did that play last time 
uh, at the I library. Was, that so was so it, much fun. So I look forward yeah. to having a piece in this somehow. All righty, I, I will I will put you down for that. Um, you and also the fir- the Shays Rebellion is at the First Congregational Church. Six thirty tomorrow. And that is with Dennis Picard. Correct? Yeah. Yes. Yep. Who is a local historian and knows more about Westfield than God does? So. He looks like a real Bob Brown. Too, you mean? The picture. Isn't that Dr. No, Brown? No. <laughs> yes, Dr. Brown. We have Dr. Brown also. We have Dr. Brown also. Yeah. Um, you also have an open house coming up. Yes. We mentioned it briefly in the beginning. Can you share that with us? Yeah. So, you know, now that the renovations are mostly completed, you know, still <gasps> a few shelves to go in here and there or whatever. And, and Linda and we, Jane finally can get some sleep. No, think? no, no. We don't allow oh, that. Okay. <laughs> <That's>, <laughs> we we <laughs> just move them on to the next thing. No. Oh, have you told them that yet? Yeah. Oh, they know. Oh, they oh know. dear God. Uh, and they don't like me. I'm off their Christmas card <laughs> list, I think. Uh, um, so, yeah, on saturday january 26th we're having just you know a drop-in open house kind of thing we'll have some you know some light refreshments out and people can come in we'll have posters around the library talking about all the work that happened and what we did and some people around to ask questions if you want to you know know more about what we did and why we did it and how we got to where we are today um, so and, it should be a lot of fun. Up, what is coming up next for renovations? You still have things left to well, do. Well, so that was phase one we completed. Phase two is actually underway now, and it's a much smaller phase. Um, now that we have new restrooms on the main floor, we're redoing the bathrooms on the in the basement um, that were the public restrooms previously that are outside the Lang Auditorium. Um, yeah, so the ones where you need to be about one foot wide and go in sideways. I, right, yeah. so mm-hmm. they were double occupancy bathrooms which Mm -hmm. were to alleviate that issue right there we're making them single use bathrooms now that we have an additional bathroom upstairs we can make take out one of the toilets there and still meet our requirements um so there the the tiles in the plastering was finished yesterday so the painting we're hoping to have them open in time for the 26th to have everything done so phase one and two will actually be opening up and and the lower level is already handicap accessible correct yeah i mean it's it, there's nothing we can do about the fact that it's buildings built at different times where they're half mm-hmm. half layer apart yeah, or half floor apart. Um, so you do have, to, if you want to get to our basement to go to, say, the Lang Auditorium for a presentation and you're in a wheelchair, you do have to come in up our ramp, up the lift, then you take the elevator to our basement. And that would get you to at least the most of the basement where you could do children's programs. But even the Lang Auditorium is yet another half floor down from that. So you take one more lift. So it's still not convenient. There's nothing I can do about that. You know, that it's just the way the well, building was building. built, you yeah. know. It's an old uh, building. But you can get pretty much everywhere in the building. There's still two places you can't get to um, that are not accessible. That's our archives and um, the historical museum. museum. We're working on making the historical museum more interactive, that you can do a digital sort of tour of it a little bit better. Um, um, how, how does the law work with that? Uh, well, we're grandfathered in, again, be, being an ancient building. Um, so we've made our best efforts. I mean, uh, yeah. It's, it's yeah well, I, I ask for selfish reasons because we have that issue also mm-hmm. with the balcony at uh, the theater. We We can't. Without tearing everything out and completely mm. redoing the whole building, yeah, it's not going to be feasible. Right. Um, so for us, we still have to we we have to provide access to what's there. So that's why we're, we have a video that you can sort of watch now and see what's there. But we're trying to make it more uh, digital online oh. version where you can do a digital tour. I need a picture of that kitchen too. Come mm. to think of it. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Now that you reminded me. <laughs> You did. I need pictures of the kitchen. I need to get a hold of Kate because we'll be using your pictures for the time in Westfield. We'll just have to Photoshop out the sprinkler pipe that's <laughs> off to the side. Now. We're going to be Oops. boxing it in. But. Oops. Oopsie. Oopsie. Well, we'll take care of We're that. We're required we'll to have sprinklers there now, so those aren't quite they uh, are, historically they're n- accurate. They're not authentic <laughs> colonial sprinklers? <laughs> right, exactly. Darn it. I was pretty sure they were authentic. <laughs> yeah. They we did our best. Uh, oh. Oh, gee whiz, I'll have to go look the next time. And you still... They're on little pulleys, and it's a a little uh, paper bucket brigade (laughs) or something. Oh, gosh, you you need help. You need help. Lots of it. But I noticed that you're getting the museum back up to snuff downstairs, your art museum. Yeah, the art art gallery is... um, Right now, we're... we had a framed art collection that we used to circulate framed art. People would come in, check out mm-hmm. art, and put it on their walls, and then bring it back. Um, it just takes up too much space and was not getting a lot of circulation, so we've, we're getting rid of that. So we're selling 
off those pieces. Oh. They're down to $10 now, so come I in, grab some art. I, I noticed it, but I didn't know that's what you were going to do. Yeah, um, and so then we're hoping to get that done through January, so then in February we can start putting out regular exhibits again. Exhibit. We're gonna, we have plans for a lot of historical exhibits from uh, February through May to coincide yeah, with all of 350th stuff. That makes um, sense. I don't remember the exact order, but one is like just a general history of Westfield. And then um, I think it was the places, like a lot of the places that aren't around now, like uh, sites around town kind of thing Correct. in both artwork Good and um, memorabilia kind of stuff. Um, People like that. Yeah. That's so, a great idea. So that's what we have. And then after that, we'll get back into having local artists and showing off their, their works. All right, people. Well, if you haven't been to the Athenaeum, by all means, please get down there. See the changes. See the new things. Dan, thank you for coming in and rescuing me this morning. Yeah, thanks. Peter, thank you for helping me out a lot. Uh, that's it for Ken's Den. And Ken will be back, luckily, thank God, <laughs> next week. There's always something about coming back home. City lights approaching. Over the bridge and into this town Traffic stop and moving The people tend to stay around Familiar face with the same old crowd But people still know your name Who is who and who's to blame For silly pranks before high school games Of hockey, football, baseball still the same Generations go on past And mornings go by way too fast We don't need another time We don't need another vision Because we're here and now Westfield now still Moving forward to the last Held on values we hold true Still raise high Red, white, and blue. We're proud to song, get the job done. Makes it time for a little fun. Come see what we've done today. Westfield is here to stay. Little River Road, so many opportunities arose. Manufacture whips and arms and gear. The supply train know the world starts here. Heroes rise and call upon police and fire and national guard. Community will rise above to protect and serve in our backyard. We don't need another time. We don't need another vision. We're headed down with Westfield Master. Moving forward, built to last. Held on values we hold true. Still raise high, red, white, and blue. We're proud and strong to get the job done. Make some time for a little fun. Come see what we've done. Westfield is here to stay Our city life of these days Sprinkles holiday care Long winter's rays Street lights glow with gaslight warmth To bring us back to charm We hold tight to tradition here Celebrate 350 years of rebuilds, wars fought, and kids coming home from victories, losses, and parts unknown. They don't need another time. They don't need another vision. They're coming home to Westfield, Mass. Still moving forward, built to last. Held on values we hold true Still raise high, red, white, and blue They're proud to song, get the job done But make some time for a little fun Come see
see what they've done today. Westfield is here to stay. Here to 